once again everyone um, and good morning and uh, thank you for having me so um, as you know today's session is about best practices for running mysql and production and uh, i'll try to revolve around uh, on a high level three topics basically uh, which is a backup tool which uh, available for the mysql and uh, what are the pros and cons of it on a very high level on importance of having the basic HA and MySQL troubleshooting. Uh, so as part of the day-to-day -day DBA activities, uh, you know, this is one of the most important, the, these three factors are the most important, I feel, uh, to have it, uh, to safeguard uh, uh, database, also to ensure the availability of the MySQL database or the database for that matter. And yes, uh, to ensure what are the pra best practices or best approach uh, or what all things needs to be taken care when we are doing a troubleshooting, uh, especially uh, while solving the performance related issues that revolves around the MySQL. Uh, so these are, this is the agenda. A little bit about me. I'm working for TechMojo Solution as a lead DB and production support engineering team and uh, using mysql and trying to contribute to forum as and when i can and uh, most of the time trying to gain knowledge out of the forums uh, i thank you my db ops and karthik santana everyone for inviting me here and i hope this talk will be useful for you guys yep so let's start with the backup tools and which are available for the mysql and uh, also um, uh, what are the tools that widely should uh, in, in certain scenarios should be used should be avoided why and what are the reasons for that as you know backup is the one of the most important important aspect as a dba um, uh, to regularly take backups uh, and to have a robust backup and recovery plan in place. Uh, it, just to ensure that during the disaster situation or uh, to ensure that for the regular operation, you're having your backups ready, usable, and at the same time uh, to ensure that you're using proper tools so that those backups can be used efficiently. On a high level, I would like to touch upon these two things. Uh, first is the types of backup that, you know, uh, available for the MySQL. And that uh, if you broadly divide, it's a logical or physical, basically. So logical backups, there are different tools available. Most uh, widely used is MySQL dump. Apart from that, there are other um, my, my dumper and uh, MySQL pump also available, but broadly it is logical and physical. In physical, you have uh, enterprise as well as open source uh, tools available and uh, which can be used and widely popularly used is uh, um, Percona Extra Backup, also MySQL Enterprise Backup, and uh, there are other backup solutions as well. Now, when we are talking about the backup, it is the very first and most important thing that uh, in the production environment, especially that needs to be taken care of is what is the size of the database that you're having or your application is having or your product is having or your platform is having and versus which type of backup will be useful for, you know, uh, for it. For a smaller application, I would, uh, smaller as in when when the data size is um, less than i would say like you know 10 gb or 15 gb maybe logical backup sounds good however as a standard practice i always recommend to use physical backup it's easy it's robust and over the period as the database evolves you don't need to go back and forth changing your backup strategies so when you're running anything on production uh, it's always safe bet to have a physical backup using Percona Extra Backup because uh, these tools also give you the opportunity to do a point-in-time recovery 
it also give you a faster you know restoration it also give you faster backup time and there are many advantages over logical backup logical backup comparatively simple one line command and also it helps you to save the storage space because it's it doesn't store all the physical files it's a logical format sql uh, written to the backup and while restoration it does insertion to all you know uh, in it restores the database in form of insertions so yeah these are the advantages um, however the disadvantage of logical backup is comparatively it takes longer time right uh, if you compare with the physical backup even for the smaller size i believe there will be hardly a marginal difference um, uh, in in logical and physical backup even while considering the smallest databases it takes longer time to restore a logical backup uh, because you really have to if you are running let me tell you if you are running even let's say 200 gp of the data or 150 gp of the data and if you are taking a mysql dump you land up spending a lot of time when it comes to restoration it's a single threaded basically and moreover uh, it takes time yes and it becomes really unpractical when it when, when it comes to anything beyond uh, 80 90 gb or something right because then in a, in a disaster situation you cannot wait for your restoration to complete and then you bring up your business up right so it takes really long time uh, physical backup are storage intensive but at the same time it gives you a lot of flexibility it is faster and uh, and it's reliable as well one of the another important thing when we are talking about the backups it's not just the data at times uh, in certain especially for the production always ensure whatever the cron jobs you are running on your production whether it is backup jobs uh, whether it is your internal data churning jobs whether it is your back end related you know jobs whatever the cron jobs you are running on your you know uh, database server ensure those files are copied those files are also having a backup all right so uh, because once you I, i'm i'm just giving a hypothetical scenario here if you lose your uh, you know a, a particular server due to hardware failure or uh, if you are running on cloud and if, if let's say that instance is not coming up for xyz reason you don't only i mean keeping the backup of the data or the ha aside you also lose your cron jobs and people often make this mistake in production to forget to take the cron tab backups also at the same time your cron job backups and in certain cases you may also want to take your mysql user backup now why i'm saying this usually uh, it does happen it depends upon um, environment to environment organization to organization or rather dbs to dpa so in certain environment i have observed wherein a uh, master master let's say if you are having a master slave a uh, master has 100 users but maybe a um, uh, slave may land up having more than 100 users or or it's not equivalent because they want to always isolate the master access from the back end user and for certain business requirement they have to give the you know uh, access to the business users uh, uh, business for 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 the you know back end purpose and everything so in 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 certain organizations in certain practices people prefer to give only slave access so that they can isolate the performance related issues uh, to slave and it doesn't bother the master apart from that uh, it is very much essential uh, when we are talking about backup uh, the backup the regular backup which you do it has to have a proper monitoring system in certain cases uh, you know uh, we observe that people uh, land up missing this but this is one of the most essential part and uh, um, and in in today's age i think it is very much easy to integrate this with any any sort of tool or maybe uh, 
as an email or something, but having a monitoring on the backup, whether your backup is successfully completed or not, is very much essential. So monitoring on the backup is, is, is as much essential as having the backup. If you are having a backup and if you're not having the monitoring on your backup, whether it is successfully completed or not, it is as good as not having a backup. Another essential point as part of the you know, production, MySQL production backups are, you have to frequently test as a pe periodically, you have to test your backups and your backup strategy also. So when I'm talking about your backup strategy also, maybe let's say you, uh, you have a weekly full backup policy and uh, incrementally you are and you are taking incremental backups over the pay over the weekdays right so the entire chain has to be you know tested whenever you are testing your backups and this is very much essential unless you test your backup you can't 100 percent guarantee that you have a good backup system and uh, in production environment it can be tested on a separate server um, it can be tested as a creating slave for the existing master and you can then destroy it but having a good monitoring for the backup and testing testing uh, policy and procedure for the backup defined uh, is is very much essential it is as good as having a backup having backup without monitoring and testing policy is as good as not having a backup in in production environment uh, in my experience, I have seen, uh, you know, a lot of challenges revolves around uh, these two areas, specific, specifically in monitoring and testing backups. And I, I would highly recommend this is something that once you spin off your production MySQL instance, this is must to have before it goes live. That brings me to uh, move on to the uh, my next slide. which is um, importance of having HA. So basically, uh, there are one thumb rule is make, uh, uh, I mean, you can, there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of ways to have an HA. Uh, I would recommend at least have a bare minimum HA like master and slave. Uh, there are a lot of tools and technique that goes into it. You know, there are a lot of sophisticated technology people use for the HA. And uh, at times it's very complex, but having a bare minimum HA as a master and slave is a must for any production environment. No matter what is the budget of your project, no, no matter how cost sensitive the client is, end client is, it's as a DBA, I feel it's, it's, it's our primary responsibility to ensure that it is having an HA and we are recommending it. So basically it is as good as HA is your friend. That's what I feel. And you know, whenever something goes wrong, he'll be there for you in certain cases, not all the cases, obviously. So, and while designing HA, uh, it has to be taken care of. There are a few things that must be taken care, of, right? It has to be fault tolerant architecture. You can't, uh, if you're running on a bare metal, you can't, um, you know, um, uh, it's a different story nowadays, you know, majority of the, you know, people are, you know, using cloud, uh, ensuring like, you know, um, uh, if you are having on-premises data center, um, at least ensure that it is not sit the both the servers are not sitting on the same rack if possible have it over the different you know network architecture obviously latency comes into the place but there are a lot of ifs and buts there so as much as possible have a have a fault tolerant tolerant architecture um, uh, avoid single point of failure having only standalone master for the critical application even if it is a um, uh, I have seen architecture, uh, uh, you know, uh, where people ask uh, uh, about if it's an in-house application, should I be using master slave or should I just go with the master because why to have it just an internal application? It may be some XYZ tool with the organization internally using it, but no. Um, anything that uh, goes out for the production, whether it is for internal use or for external use, uh, internal as in maybe internal to the organization, it and uh, some people try to define it as critical and non-critical, but uh, I think having HA gives you know uh, gives you a lot of benefit, protects you against a lot of outages, and protects you against a lot of data loss. 
right so uh, avoid having single point of failure in for any mysql instance every mysql instance must and should have a slave uh, at least and your replica basically whenever you are having the h which is uh, you know in this case mysql replication maybe it is you know um, let's talk about simple replication which is master slave asynchronous replication it is a, it, it it is just to protect you against the downtime which caused by maybe hardware network level maybe data center level or software level or os level uh, but it is not for it, it it cannot be completely used as a you know uh, you know to protect your data completely so what i mean what i mean by it is uh, since it's in replication and by nature it has to transfer everything whatever you do or perform over the master it has to replicate it over the slave and let's say one of your teammates or one you or you know uh, or someone by mistake who has the access deletes unintentionally uh, you know certain data or or a schema or maybe something else right and it has to replicate the very same thing on the slave and you can't get it back so basically in other words your replica cannot be your backup strategy uh, and uh, um, i often you know in my past experience i have i've have come across certain situation where people treat your, their replica as a backup uh, which is not the case that that is big no and it should not be treated as your um, you know uh, a backup strategy backup strategy your replica cannot be your backup your replica is just to give you a safeguard against hardware failure software failure network failure right uh, data center level failure um, xyz it protects you against unplanned downtime and it it is also helpful to reduce the uh, i'm sorry that it's a typo it's a planned downtime uh, so um unplanned downtime uh, if something let's say uh, example is if your hardware on your master has you know has some issue and it fails due to that maybe you know storage gone for the toss or maybe uh, some other issue right uh, you still have a slave where you can rely on and maybe you can start off with that it again depends upon your operational policies which you have defined that you know i can run with the i can run everything on slave i just need to do few things here and there uh, as i mentioned in my earlier slide and when we are discussing some in some application you have users more or less on slave than the master or vice versa so again your operational guidelines uh, define those things and you can still have a slave and you can may because your master is down you may want to reduce your unplanned downtime you can use your slave with the with the you know to bring up the business again how much it is in sync data loss those all comes into the picture uh, and uh, yeah but it really helps in that sense and every high availability will have a high cost but not having an ha can cost you more than the high availability cost in other words having an additional ha i mean or having an ha rather uh, may cost you uh, let's say few hundred dollars but not having an ha will cost you more than that for sure because in today's age and world availability is your reputation if you are available that's your reputation if you are not available that that's the big no i mean people try to avoid so being a cost sensitive on the high availability is is not a good idea when it comes to database yeah and that brings me to 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 the next topic which is uh, troubleshooting now um, as we discussed two things one is the backup using the backup tool and second one is having the ha as a db i feel uh, uh having sorted your ha and backup solves a lot of issues uh and safeguards you basically however there is a third aspect which is the day to day job troubleshooting tickets what not right and troubleshooting is one of the main um i would say responsibility or a job uh 
of a MySQL DBA or a DBA rather, right? Uh, that day to day you have to look after your performance. It is up to the mark. If you have defined SLAs for the response time, it has to be meant. Uh, and everything boils down to the database, I feel. Always, when whenever the application performance comes, uh, the very first thing people you know try to look into is is the database. Uh, whenever you are having in any production system, if you are having MySQL performance issues, um, the best bet is to uh, or or the best approach, as per my experience, uh, it may differ, but have your have your problem problem very well defined. And that helps to start from where you have to start your troubleshooting, basically. So uh, if, if, if let's say, if application is slow or end user is complaining, you know, they are not able to use certain functionality or maybe it is slow as per the bench, uh, as per the defined SLAs, you, you set your problems or you define your problem very clearly. It may evolve over the period as you troubleshoot and resolve that issue. You That means you start with, considering that the problem is A, and when you narrow down, you land up catching something else, but that's okay. But have your problem very well defined when you start and have a concave, in, I know, concave approach. Basically, you concave approach is to have a bigger problem and drill down, drill down, narrow it down to the bottom uh, where it becomes, where you catches the actual issue, the root cause of the issue. Now, let me give you a few uh, or, or, or one example there, uh, how all these steps helps you uh, in production environment, especially uh, when you face the performance issues. Uh, there are there are two aspects I would say of any 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 performance issues on a very high level. One is configuration level issue, and another is the another is the uh, I would say a pure performance issue. It can be also configuration but not having the basic configuration in place may lead to a lot of performance issue as in when you scale so maybe when you start your product or a platform using mysql and you don't have a lot of concurrency those smaller problems may not be visible uh, as in when you have a concurrency the settings which you are using may hurt you and may lead you to the downtime or may also lead you to the slowness of the application, which eventually loses the business. It's a it's a direct revenue impact there. So uh, what kind of configurations we are talking about? And it again differs to application to application. There is no silver bullet for any performance uh, or, or rather to for uh, uh, there is no silver bullet in terms of configuration that this is the right configuration must to do. There are few, but not I would not say that in general. So always look after your isolation levels, which you are using for your database. That is number one. Number two, what kind of uh, IOPS you are having and accordingly adjust your uh, you know, DBTRX commit. That's number two. Uh, apart from that, uh, there are other, how, man, how much is your InnoDB uh, uh, log file size uh, is defined versus how much you are writing and uh, so these are the few basic that i would suggest to at least look after have a benchmark and ensure that you are having the right suitable value for your application that helps you to set the at least configuration level issues aside second is when you are this is the configuration part of the issues another is your configuration is right and over the period all of a sudden you are starting having application slowness or some or the other issue start with the resource utilization very first step when i'm saying resource utilization it can be your os level resource utilization it can be your mysql level uh, configuration level utilization uh, or mysql resource utilization when i say mysql resource utilization uh, that means whether it can be a buffer pool it can be a redo log it can be your thread cache it can be your um, sorting it can be uh, related to uh, some other memory related configuration of your MySQL. So start with monitoring the resource utilization. And uh, for this, you must have a good historical data. And when I'm saying historical data, it depends again, but I would say at least have one month of data because it 
you never know what is your business cycle looks like. Maybe every Sunday you're facing this issue or maybe every first day of the month you're facing issue or every day at a particular peak hour you're facing this issue. You must have that historical data, at least a two months of data, I would suggest you must have. And monitor that resource particular utilization over the period of break it down to monitor what happened in last six hours, what happened in last two days, what happened in last seven days, and what happened in last one month or two months for a, that particular resource. What the spike looks like? Is there any pattern there? Right. So once you identify that, which all parameters you would like to monitor, check the historical utilization of that particular. A chart or a component or a few components. It could be CPU utilization, it could be memory utilization, it could be your IOPS, it could be your InnoDB, um, you know, write IOs, it could be your InnoDB read IOs, it could be uh, the pattern of your overall traffic of your MySQL selects, the, you know, uh, you, you get a command counter chart uh, in most of the or most of the MySQL related monitoring, right? Whether it is a data dog, whether you use uh, Nagios, Zabbix, uh, if you use PMM, that's good because it gives you in depth as a DBA, it gives you very rich experience and matrices to monitor and uh, which helps a lot while troubleshooting. It makes your job really easy while troubleshooting. So have that, have identify and monitor those historical utilizations and check for the pattern if there is any pattern there. All, also at the same time, have your uh I'm, I'm not sure there are some feature uh, in certain tools wherein you can mark or if not mark you may have your own set of uh, uh notes in your runbook or maybe have a have a deployment or code change tracker wherein you can make you can look for if was there any recent deployment changes that has happened right and uh, once you identify that you know this kind of problem only you have faced post deployment or post introducing any new feature or changes um, maybe something to look there to start with what all new queries or feature you have introduced maybe what all new um, stored procedure that got introduced in that particular release or a deployment and accordingly try to check those new procedures and new codes or latest changes and try to analyze whether there are you know there are any issues there related to performance or something that you have missed uh, before deploying that and compare the query behavior so this is one of the most important thing which can help you to understand what is the issue if you drill down and if you understand okay the query is behaving slow maybe this is the new query which got introduced in last release right or last deployment or maybe this is the same but the query pattern was different query, uh, i'm sorry query behavior was different uh, However, to even understand whether it was different, you really need to have a historical data. Ensure that you're having um, uh, you know, query logs for at least 10 days. That also reminds me to say that. Or 10 days, or maybe it, it depends, because usually query logs are not that bigger. Maybe in the uh, it, it again depends upon how highly concurrent uh, the environment is and what is your low uh, long query time. But have your query logs i would suggest at times it really really helps you to troubleshoot the issue when you want to really compare what was it before and after and that 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 also tells you like you know uh, uh you i mean uh, if i have to mention here then use the Percona toolkit uh, which is very well known across uh especially pt query digest right and uh and it gives you very good statistics in a few minutes it depends upon how much you know uh, how big query file you are churning and how much the cpu are available on your you know server uh, and if you're processing gb or file which you have never rotated for years it may end up taking minutes or uh, depends upon the size of the mysql query log so always ensure um, uh, that whenever you're querying you are just filtering out if you're if that is something that you should not be. You should always rotate your MySQL logs because during troubleshooting, you will feel these pains if you don't do that. So at least churn out the, you know, one pro rows of 50,000 rows or 5,000, depending upon the size again, 
and try to process that using MySQL query, uh, PT query digest and try to understand what are your top five queries, what is the standard deviation that you're looking for. Uh, I mean, uh, what are the standard deviation that each query has? Maybe at times it is getting resolved in few milliseconds and at times it is taking two seconds, which is scary, right? And uh, again, so those kind of statistics will be only useful or will, will only be available when you are using these tools. PMM also has a query analyzer. That's a, that, that is another different way of analyzing and doing the troubleshoot. And uh, using the right tool for the troubleshooting is very much important. Having the monitoring data, um, you know, for your uh, MySQL uh, is 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 very essential as a DBA. Otherwise, you will be just randomly hitting the problems and solving it. And uh, I I feel that's not the best way because you will never know where you are landing uh, where, where you are landing yourself. Uh, and uh, and it will be always reactive, and you will never be able to learn from your past mistakes and adjust your performance matrices accordingly. So having a you know um, a monitoring tool uh, for the mysql uh, especially for the troubleshooting is very very much important using the right tool uh, as i mentioned uh, percona toolkit uh, for uh, which brings pt query digest that also helps a lot uh, while analyzing the queries and getting the reports there are a lot of benchmarks. Uh, I mean, uh, there are a lot of uh, options and variables that you can use with it. You can define for the time period, like, you know, you just want to monitor from this row query, from start time to this, to end time to this, and give me 100% of the queries, rather than just giving me a top 20 or top 25 or XYZ or top 98%. So uh, those kind of, uh, you know, uh, variables, you can use it in the command line uh, while, while while doing the performance analysis and and once you learn from this uh, uh, you know uh, incidents i think these are the best this, these are the best uh, knowledge base i feel that to keep uh, not only for yourself but for the community also for the for within organization for your team also because uh, this this helps a lot uh, for the not only for yourself but also for the you know uh, people who join um, your team in future and the last thing is there are a few things which uh, which should be kept in mind very well when you're running mysql on production first of all as a dba you should run it like you own it uh, uh, i mean uh, when i when i say this uh, this means that um, there is no uh, there is no way back when 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 you are a dba and you're and you're running a production and you can't say hey i don't know because xyz dba might have done it or my you know uh, my past colleague might have done something and i don't know right now so i mean big no you can't use those things in production right those kind of excuses uh, so you have to run it like you own it you should know your database in and out how it behaves uh, keep a watch on access must the one which are highlighted in blue are really read really these are very minute, minute things. Let me tell you, if anybody in this uh, forum has experienced the uh, audit ever, ISO audits or other, you know, uh, uh, data protection related audits, uh, people who have faced this, they will know it. What is the importance of this? And forget about only audit purpose. This, this really safeguard your interest as a database administrator because you are the owner of it. So keep a watch, very good watch on your access. Have a have a at least quarterly audit of your of your what all new users got added and just have a review right uh, audit the privileges not only the you know users but they what are the privileges right um i'll i'll a few examples which i can give you uh, um, you know giving extra privileges at times hurt you know people get access to schema.star and they just do nasty things even for the read queries even you have given a read access uh, you don't know they will go into blow your you know db buffer pool like anything by just running queries which are just runs for hours and hours and hours or maybe minutes and that hurts the performance and then you end up solving the issues which are really tough to resolve have a good backup test plan and have a good ha health check because 
having a ha is one thing having a ha health and ensuring it is healthy is another so these are must and very basic bare minimum uh, which saves you know uh, uh, which saves you as a dba basically um it's good to have a performance report periodically uh, what are your top 10 queries what are your top 10 uh, you know uh, what are your top 10 uh, table growth what are your top 10 alerts for this month and what are your top 10 slow queries this gives you a very good visibility even if you try to analyze this over the week like you know if you have this weekly at the end of the month you will realize how much data you gather and how much more you can analyze to understand your database well right and the most important thing is to have a robust sdlc system right software development life cycle but and when i'm saying this it should i mean it is more of on the dba from the dba perspective having a proper auditing system before anything goes live so uh, i'm uh, if you are running uh, if you if you are if you are working in as a dba and uh, and if you're working where where uh, you have a frequent deployments uh, this is something we should we, we, we should be really closely consider anything which goes to production has to be you but as a dba we must filter those things we must have a have a look there uh, from the performance perspective from a maybe design perspective maybe you see that this table will land up growing hundreds of gbs what are the archive policy for this you know um okay you are introducing this new query to a very big table are we using index in that how frequently this will be hit right these kind of questions will help you to eliminate few you know any issues before it occurs and that's how you can suggest whether there is that the, you need to change the approach for the for this query or for the design perspective you have to change the approach you may end up having a partition on that table uh, you know um one of our product application is using certain tables very heavily and uh, i'll give i'll tell you from my experience like you know uh, at times it's like you know 600 700 gb of table and it is our transactional table and it's frequently used it's partitioned but having one bad query can you know can give you a really bad day uh, really bad day like you know you don't know where to start then and um, so yeah having this a close watch over anything which goes to the production is uh, is something which protects you from uh, you know um, having a good sleep it ensures you, you will not have a uh, you know unpleasant uh, midnight calls basically so yeah and uh, lastly i would suggest that uh, um, uh, know your application very well uh, i mean uh, the something which is not mentioned in my slide but i would i would highly recommend as a dba you once you know your application really well you you really understand how uh, how any new release will going to affect you or and and you bring a lot of ideas to the table when you know your application and it's not just focusing on the dba task like you know my back yeah obviously those are very important right access backups ensuring monitoring is there ensuring alerts are there ensuring ha is there ensuring ha uh, is working properly uh, ensuring uh, the performance and health is good but at the same time knowing your application is equally important because once you know in and out of your application what all modules you are running what kind of queries each module runs i mean you don't need to really need to know the code but you really need to understand the nature of it as an application as a platform or as a product right uh, if you are running multi, you know, uh, microservice architecture, what each module does, what is your pain area? You know, this module is very heavy in terms of reading and writing. This module is very heavy even in terms of reading. And what kind of query? If I introduce one new item here, I know it will going to impact me two x on my so and so table. So knowing your application is a very must as a DBA, which I feel, which I have learned over the period. Basically, uh, it's not just DBA tasks you really need to know your product and platform to understand which makes your life easy you can forecast a lot of things you can foresee a lot of things before it goes to production and before anybody tries to introduce any bad stuff to uh, you know uh, production unintentionally you can raise an alarm and you can stop because you can see what it can look like when it goes to database 
so yeah i mean that's it and uh, from my side and and lastly um, i'm sorry uh, santana am i allowed to promote <laughs> i just sure. wanted sure sure Right. Okay, I, I'm sorry I didn't ask you before this. So. <laughs> Not a problem. Okay, so we are growing and we are hiring for multiple roles across the verticals. Feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn or or you can visit job portal uh, jobs.techmojo.in/jobs. We are hiring for different verticals across, like you know, from product on you know from product side, like you know we are hiring product owners, product managers, we are hiring account managers, we are hiring deliveries, um, uh, we are hiring for project management, we are hiring for scrum masters we are hiring dbas we are hiring testing uh, on testing side we are also hiring on the development side uh, and a lot of exciting stuff is going on so i would recommend to reach out and uh, or visit this page thank you thank you santana and thank you everyone thank you thank you so much vaibo and we have a first question from amit he just raised his hands let me allow him to talk sure. Hi Amit, are we audible? Uh, Amit, you're still on mute. Yeah, it's okay right now. Yes, you are audible. Okay, 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 okay. Hi, this is Amit Padhi. This side, uh, uh, I'm talking about the backup part on which the Babu is is talking about this. Like, uh, do you think a physical backup works? that we de- that we take today after a five or six year because at that time all scenarios were changed. Like OS version, kernel version, all libraries that support third-party tools. Maybe today's backup file is not readable or operationable in future on a new hardware. Can we do something on this issue? And my last question is that I think we design a backup process in such a way that uh, we can restore a single table uh, if we need a just a restoration of a single ba- single table format, uh, 100 TB of a ba- um, backup file. So we can restore easily that table. I have these okay. two questions only. You got it. So uh, thanks for the question, Amit. And uh, that's a very good question. So first of all, the physical backup. When I mean to say physical backup, I'm not referring to snapshot. Or, or I, I think you are getting. I, I think what you mean is uh, OS level snapshot. Uh, I mean storage level snapshot or, or VM level snapshot. Basically, when I say physical backup, I, I was actually referring to the. Uh, uh, to the um, let's say uh, Percona extra DB, uh, uh, Percona extra backup, or MySQL enterprise backup. Those are the physical backups. Uh, that's quite. That, I, I hope I answer your question, and uh, uh, which is very much relevant. And I would rather uh, the, I would suggest even if your database is smaller, go for these backups. It's reliable. Um, however, one oh, must. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Okay, if we're talking about the uh, extra backup of a Percona backup, I just have uh, some example that I faced in the past. Like, uh, I'm using a, uh, on my, some other server, it's a, it's a version of a 2.1 of your extra backup. Then I try to restore that backup on my version of a 2.2. It doesn't work. So uh, when I upgrade my backup, um, backup tool then it take uh, uh, so uh, so uh, i'm just coming for that like hey, those files or uh, those third party tools today we are using it works after five or ten years or on the same hardware do, those are required at this time because at that time all, all the scenarios are completely changed either hardware packet or uh, either a hard drives or a os or a kernel or a library files all these are completely changed after in a in the next couple, in the next coming five to six year, so we think. Um, I mean, we have to think about how we take, uh, how we deal that kind of situation at that time. Uh, yes, I mean, I agree. See, uh, when it comes to upgrading the system, not only from the from the uh, database perspective, but uh, also in general, uh, whether it is OS, whether it is hardware, whether it is your legacy servers, it's always, uh, you know ensure that you are not reaching your end of life cycle anywhere because then it becomes a little bit difficult for everything. Again, 
all the version uh, I'm, I'm i'm i didn't actually get it which version you're talking about but yes in general even uh, certain versions will not support certain tools because those are you know if you are using a legacy system right uh, or something which has an end of life if we, take a, uh, if, if we just take a, okay if we just take a simple example like uh, if we take a backup through a mysql workbench but we unable to restore that file over um, uh, through a mysql mysql command line mm -hmm. it shows some kind of an error okay so yeah. how we deal this kind of because uh, like mysql workbench uh, jo bhi iska version hai it it's working today but okay. that same version not not working after 5 or 6 years uh i mean uh, so first of all i'm uh, i would say like you know first again two thing comes here right your mm -hmm. mysql backup when you have taken the backup um mm -hmm. first thing is whether your backup is completed successfully so if yes mm -hmm. it has to be restorable uh, uh otherwise there is something wrong there may be other things which can come into the picture maybe your disk is full while restoring and you got the error and it got exited i mean i mean n number of things we can no, no. even i am any i am talking about if we if we take a backup through a mysql workbench and mm -hmm. and uh, and workbench create a some file and when we try to restore a backup to of a dead file to a mysql command line at that time i face a issue go okay, this is not a supportable file or or or, or, or some kind of a issue maybe so i am if i get the exact issue what was the error maybe something i can share if i know uh, definitely uh -huh. i can try to help uh, and okay. it would be even great i mean uh, it would be great to know what kind of i mean which what exactly issue you are talking about because it may be a learning for uh, you know Uh, for me no i mean it's a But it's a one day. thing is there if you are trying to restore something i mean issue because Yes, I think Amit, uh, as Raj, as Vaibhav rightly mentioned, right? It will be great if you can, you know, write us about the exact issue to info at mydbops dot com, and and I will be able to liaison between Vaibhav and you, and we will be able to provide the solution for you through email, uh, because you know we also have to consider that we have other people are also who are who have requested to ask question to Vaibhav. So okay. considering that, it will be great if you can share across an email, and uh, and Vaibhav will be able to revert to you on that. Okay. Yeah, thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you. Amit. Yes, sir. Yeah, and we also have one more question from Pramod. Uh, Available. Just give me a minute. Let me unmute him. Hi, Pramod. Uh, yes, you can talk. You can just unmute and you can start asking your question to Vibo. Hi. Hi, Vibo. Hi. Hi, Pramod. Uh, Yeah, so my question is whether is regarding the MySQL backup it's also. So yeah, uh, suppose uh, what should be a critical application uh, backup policy should be like? Suppose I'm having uh, lots of transaction per second. So apart from uh, 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 daily backup, can we go with uh, like uh, every hours or uh, what about the binary log backup? absolutely yes um uh, again um uh, uh having having a proper back backup backup policy is is very much important as you mentioned like you know if you are taking a your question is if you are taking a mysql dump should we also think of doing a backup of the binary log every hour so that mm -hmm. we have we can safeguard as much as possible absolutely yeah. yes if if application requires that one must and there is no harm and most of the time uh, let me share from my experience i mean uh, you know before uh, not in my current organization but when uh, you know i was doing some some uh, some other place i mean the, mm -hmm. the, there are, uh, there are a lot of uh, i mean it depends upon project budget at times you know when you are trying to implement this kind of you know if your data size is very huge and if you are trying to do uh, this kind of backup strategy there are a lot of cost sensitive thing comes into the picture but i think as a dba you should not even worry about it you should just state of it uh, decide and suggest it's up to the business whether they want to do it or not but one mm -hmm. one must i mean it's a very good thing to have a robust backup and recovery so basically you are trying to reduce your recovery time yeah yeah recovery time right 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 
ओके या एंड वन मोर रिगार्डिंग द बाइंड्री लॉग्स सो व्हाट शुड बी परफेक्ट परफेक्ट साइज और व्हाट इज एन एवरेज साइज फॉर द बाइंड्री लॉग वी शुड कंसीडर आई मीन अगेन डिपेंड्स राइट आई मीन i mean it depends how much you are writing every hour what is your interval there like you know what kind of uh, you know uh, oh I, uh, I, okay yeah i got your point yeah it depends upon but, but, our but there is no there, there is no there, there is no define this thing uh, or a right formula for there i mean it depends upon requirement to requirement again <laughs> so is there is there uh, suppose uh, i have uh, configured a uh, very large size of the binary log so is there uh, effect on the replication side or is there any other effect i can consider if i mention the size large very large no binary log binary log size you mean okay so i i'm i'm sorry i'm not sure uh, on the binary log size front uh let me be very clear here i thought other way, i i i thought you are still asking about backup thing but when you are talking about replication it has nothing to do with your size uh if it is uh, if it is uh, uh no i i don't think it it depends okay. on how frequently you are writing how many database what kind of replication filter you are using uh okay. also it depends upon your network speed also it depends upon your configuration of your slave if it is not yeah. identical at times that also plays a picture whether also you are using that slave for some other purpose so but in general no it it should not matter okay okay thanks sir thank yeah. thank you thank you so much uh, vibo for an amazing session and for letting loose with erudite fireworks this morning uh, i hope majority of the questions have been answered and if you have more questions please feel free to write us to info@mydbops.com